Life Audio. Today we are looking at Psalm 62, which talks about this concept of soul rest. And there's a difference between deep soul rest and just resting like taking a nap. And so today we're going to explore that a little bit and we're going to get to the root of how we experience true soul rest and what that actually means. I pray this episode is a blessing for you. After a quick word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's episode together. Stay tuned. Hey, Dr. Bill Sinyard here with the Gospel Rant. You know, there's lots of Bible studies out there, but only one rant. Our passion is to help frustrated, beat-up Christians hear the music again. Maybe you? Come join us. The Gospel Rant. Hey, friends. Welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we are going through Psalm 62, but real quick before we get into that, I just want to say if you are newer to the Hearing Jesus Podcast or the She Hears ministry that we have, I want to let you know that The psalm series that we're doing now comes after a long stint of different series that we did to kind of set you up to be in this place. And so if you are somebody that's rather new and perhaps you find this series just maybe a little bit confusing or you just don't feel like you're quite ready for that, my suggestion is to go back to square one, start from our very first episodes and go through them in order. We started with a Desires of the Heart series that looks at our identity in Christ. We went into the She Hears Bible study, which teaches the color method and how to meditate on the scriptures. You can hear God's voice on your own outside of a Bible study, but just in your regular Bible. And then we went into the spiritual disciplines, which are geared towards helping you learn how to hear God's voice in your everyday life. And then we started this Psalm series basically to give you an opportunity to have an audio devotional. But for some of you, I'm getting um, just really common questions for, for newer believers or if you're new to doing a devotional or listening to devotional reading that may be helpful for you to go back and start with some of those foundational series that we offered to kind of help get you to a place where this serves you better and it makes more sense in your life. That being said, um, there's two common questions that I feel like I have been getting a lot lately that I just want to make sure that you understand my heart with, um, the, the podcast, the, the different resources we have available. There is a common sense that people feel overwhelmed or like they can't hear God's voice And that perhaps they're doing it wrong or they're praying the wrong way or there's just something wrong with them because they're not hearing God's voice. I want you to realize that um, there's there's a, a caveat to that. And it has to start with salvation. It has to start with this surrendering of your heart and laying it before the cross of Christ and saying, okay, Jesus, come into my life because I can't do this on my own. And so there's this confession of your own sins and your inability to do this on your own. And then this, this asking Jesus to come in and and be Lord of your life. And if you have not gotten to that point where you have reconciled that and you have come to faith in Christ and you have surrendered and asked God to to work on your behalf, that is the starting point. And then after that starting point, it also takes time. Your relationship with God is not unlike your other relationships where you don't necessarily know their voice at first. You know, if you think about a first date or first couple dates, if, if that person were to call you on the phone, 
you might not automatically recognize their voice. But after you've been in relationship with them, my husband, when he calls, he doesn't say, hey, it's Tim. I, I know his voice. And that's because we've spent time together. I've listened to his voice. He's listened to me. We've had this relationship. And so I want you to give yourself some grace. It takes time and it's based on relationship. And so perhaps instead of the focus for you of wanting to hear this audible voice of God or being confident, perhaps you you need to put that on pause for a minute and back up and just spend time with him. Just get to know each other because that's really the foundational way that God speaks to us. He speaks to us primarily through our word, through his word. I'm sorry, but, but it's through this, this context of relationship and there are no shortcuts in that. I mean, with any relationship, there are no shortcuts. And I feel like we live in a culture that really perpetuates this idea that you can have closeness. And um, even through online relationships, there's this false sense of closeness that's that's not reality. The reality is, is it takes time. So I, I, I say all of that to say that there's no wrong way to do this. There's no wrong way to pursue your relationship with God other than not doing it. And so Um, does that mean we won't make mistakes? No, of course not. I mean, we all make mistakes in relationships all the time, but there's a grace there because God wants to be in relationship with you. He's pursuing you. The very fact that you're listening to this podcast tells me that you are also pursuing him. And so give yourself some grace, allow it to take some time. Don't feel like you're doing it wrong. Just keep going. I think that's that's the other thing is people think, okay, well, I didn't hear this audible word from God, so I'm just going to give up. Well, that's not the reality of, of the situation. And and it's not that God doesn't do that. Sometimes he does, and I've, I've heard that and experienced that. But more often, it's a still, quiet voice. And we did our biblical meditation series. That's why I I re-ran that um, because it's been really popular and it's helped people understand how to better hear his voice using God's word. And so I would encourage you to go back to the spiritual discipline series, go through that. It's 12 weeks. I would go through that and then jump back to the Psalms. That being said, once you get to this Psalm series, what we just put out and what we've been doing is journaling prompts. So if you were on my newsletter, which is free, it comes out every Monday, we will send right to your inbox journaling prompts that go along with that previous week's devotional audios. So for example, if we're doing Psalm 60, what are we doing today? Psalm 62 on Monday, you will get an email that has a journaling prompt to help you move that information from your head to your heart. So if you have not been part of the email newsletter up until this point, and you want to get your hands on that, those journaling prompts, I have a Psalm journal. It's only $5 um, on my website, shehears.org, that you can get all of those past journaling prompts. Now they're free. If you're on the email list, they're free. And every Monday you'll get those, but we don't go back and send old ones. It's just too complicated. But if you want those, it's $5. The Psalm journal uh, the one that is available right now is Psalms one through 50. And you can, you can look on there. It'll show you exactly what is included, but there is a journaling prompt. There's a verse of the day and a link that takes you right to that corresponding podcast episode. So the podcast audio devotionals are all free. The only thing you have to pay for is that journal because there are some costs associated with, with making those and you can print that. So you can either, you know, do it on your iPad or you can print it out. Do, you know, don't, don't distribute it, but however you want to use it, if you want to use it with your kids or, or, you know, your own personal Bible study time, feel free to do that. That's just a resource for you to use. And then I I like, if you're not a journaler, don't feel intimidated because these are short prompts. They're just questions. Even if you don't want to journal them, um, they're just questions to get you thinking about the content for the day and then applying it to your individual daily life. I talked to somebody the other day that said, you know, I just am not a journaler. I said, well, you could do an auto audio journal. I mean, I do that all the time. I have either my voice notes app on my iPhone or the actual notes app and I'll just do an audio note. As I'm thinking through something, sometimes I'll just do an audio journal to make mental notes for myself or actual real notes for myself. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, there's no wrong way to do this. This is about you and your relationship with God and and whatever way it's going to work to get you in the word. And so again, those are just some tips that I have. And we're going to be going through 
the rest of these psalms until we get to the end. And I think there's 150 psalms. And so um, we're almost about halfway through. So if you are not ready for that, it's okay. There's plenty of other resources available for you to kind of get you started. And we'll be here. We're not going anywhere. You know, they'll be here when you are ready for them. So let me jump into Psalm 62, and this is a Psalm of David, and I'm going to start at verse one. It says, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies with their mouths. They bless, but in their hearts, they curse. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him. Our God is our refuge. Lowborn men are but a breath. The highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard. That you, O God, are strong. That you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to... Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue discussing this episode together. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Nicole Yunus, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through His Word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com. To what He has done. So this psalm is a psalm where the big idea is basically that God is our all in all. And that's a truth that once we understand it, it it prompts us to do something about it and evangelize, inviting others into our faith. Because when you understand that as a foundational aspect of who you are in Christ, it's almost like an overflow where if you're filling up a cup of water and you get to the top and it just continues to overflow, it spills out onto everything. And, you know, a lot of people... I, I work in five countries, and one of the things that, that um, I hear a lot is, you know, we need tools for evangelism. But in my experience, evangelism is a natural side effect, I guess, if you will, of a heart that is completely filled up with Jesus. And if you are working from the overflow, it, you can't help but to tell other people about the Lord. It's just a, it's a, it's a way that God has created us to, um, to declare the things he's done in our lives. And, and that's an exciting place to be. What we're also seeing here is a couple key themes where David, the psalmist, he's setting the tone for a life that is totally dependent on God. And there's also this idea that that a life based on social status and wealth is going to come up weightless and fruitless. And I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with. And a lot, a lot of people are chasing social status and wealth that will come up weightless. And, you know, I was thinking about that um, even just over the last couple of weeks because our financial situation now is not what it used to be. I mean, at one point in our lives, um, we lived off of WIC. If you don't know what WIC is, it stands for Women, Infant, and Children. And where we live, WIC is a nutrition program for when you have, when you're nursing or have babies and toddlers at home and they give you things like tuna fish and peanut butter and cereal and milk and eggs and, and, you know, some core things. Um, we lived off of WIC and the church food pantry boxes and we couponed even I, even with WIC, I would coupon because, you know, a store near us would have us buy one, go and free. And on WIC, you could get 10 things of baby food. But if you had the buy one, get one free coupon, you could get 20. I mean, that's, that's where we were at. That was a reality of, um, the situation we were in. And there was a season where for dinner, we had like a Benton Dent grocery store, Amish store near us where, um, they had boxes of hamburger helper for a dollar, but a couple of times a year, to clear them out, they would put them on sale for four for a dollar and I would go and buy all everything that they had. And my husband would hunt, it still hunts, but we would have deer meat as our free meat and then the hamburger helper and 
that's all that's all we could scrape together i mean that was the reality of our situation and i don't think that is unlike where a lot of young couples start but let's just say that's not where we're at now you know of course it's been years and years since then but but i don't know that we are any more happy now than we were then i think um we have sought out a a life that seeks to please God first and foremost. And is it more comfortable? For sure. Um, is it easier? For sure. It is way easier not to have to, you know, take coupons to the grocery store and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But are at the core, chasing wealth or chasing even comfort has not been the thing that has given us fulfillment in our lives. What has given us fulfillment in our lives is serving God and you know, one of the most fulfilling moments of my life ever has been um, when I was in Kenya and speaking to a group of, of thousands of kids and seeing God move upon their hearts and thousands of kids came to faith in Christ that day. Um, that was, those are the moments that fulfill me, the moments where I can serve with my children and see them on the mission field and seeing them hold a baby that smells and is soiled and has flies on them and is in a desperate situation and, and my children love them uh, and hold them and give them attention. Those are the moments that are, are fulfilling or seeing my husband pray over a widow that has been broken because of life circumstances. Those are the things that fulfill us, not, not anything that we're chasing as far as bank accounts. And I think that is what we're seeing here in Psalm 62. And, and, you know, Psalms, the Psalms are, entrenched with humanity, human emotion and human circumstances. And while the circumstances are drastically different from, from ancient Mesopotamia, when this was written, the, the core essential emotions that are there are common to humanity. And so when I say that we have the same God, one of the the reasons why I say that is because God understands these human emotions and he makes provision for us to understand how to approach them in the scriptures. And so those things that teach us about his character and nature, God's character and nature doesn't change. That's who he is. And, and God's character and nature is the same character and nature of Jesus. And so we can see throughout the pages of scripture, how God would expect us or want us to handle certain situations. And so Psalm 62 is essentially a psalm of trust where David is in crisis. We, the, the crisis, the exact crisis he's having, it's not like some of the other psalms where we know. It isn't clear, but it is an expression of his faith. And to be perfectly honest, we read about David throughout the Old Testament. He has had so many attacks from enemies and he's been in so many situations that this could have been any number of them. And what we do know about this psalm is that he had enemies that were flattering him with their words, but then cursing him in their hearts. And we see that he himself views himself as like leaning on a wall or being a tottering fence, just waiting to be brought down by the schemes of these people that, you know, may, he maybe had thought were his friends, but really are true enemies. What we see in, in this Psalm is Psalm 62 and, and back in Psalm 39, there's a lot of the same language. And so if you've been with us for a while, you might recognize that, but the language has different meanings in both of those Psalms. And what I mean by that is Psalm 39 is talking about evil things that the wicked people did. Whereas now in Psalm 62, it's talking about the evil words, which also does include some evil deeds, but it's more about the words. And the basic difference between the two is David's response. Back in Psalm 39, David breaks this like self-imposed silence because he's finding that it's counterproductive. But in Psalm 62, David is finding that God is the only source of spiritual silence and peace. And so he's realizing that trusting God is the only source of peace and hope that he can have in, in the midst of this hurtful situation. And he recognizes that wealth and status and all that are just meaningless without God. So let me start with verse one. There's a couple insights that I think will be helpful as we study this Psalm. Psalm uh, 62 verse one says, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. And like I was saying at the beginning of today's episode, salvation is, is, is the, the foundational framework for, for everything that we're talking about. And so when I speak about 
some of these things, I am making the assumption that you've already made that faith commitment for salvation, that you already are saved. If you're not, then that's really step one where we need to go back to. But David is talking about how he says, truly my soul finds rest in God. It's, it's an important distinction. I want to make sure you understand that rest is more than just inactivity. Like it's more than just physically taking a nap. It's basically the, the way that the, this word is used in this uh, original language is it's basically rest from trouble or resting from your cares. And so David hints at that in both verses one and five. But when I say soul rest, I'm not talking about taking a nap and, and I'm not even really talking about Sabbath, which that's a, a rhythm that we you know, I've done episodes on that before. That's a rhythm that should be built into our lives. But really rest, meaning like peace from the trouble and the chaos. And, you know, like in his case, in this situation, just almost like torture of, of his enemies. In verse two, it's talking about God is the rock. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. These are terms that are taken right from the the military code book because what we know about David is that um, most of the things that he writes, they include some sort of military language. They talk about having an enemy, the shadow of an enemy, because remember, David was a warrior. So that's, again, some, some imagery there that, that speaks to that. And then moving down, um, he talks about... In verse four, it says they, they fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies with their mouths. They bless, but in their hearts, they curse. He's talking about being cursed by his enemies, being cursed with their mouths. So they're speaking against him. And this does not mean somebody's cussing him out. And, you know, I think in our world, that's what we would think. Um, but in that ancient world, in the ancient world of Israel, actual curses were very common. I mean, you can see that even back in like Exodus chapter 21. And it's not profanity as we would maybe think now, but it was an actual pronouncement of catastrophe over your enemy. And so other cultures would do this and they would bring gods into the picture, false gods, but curses were made in the name of gods. And so um, we don't know exactly who these enemies were. We know David fought a lot of different kinds of enemies. We don't know if these were Israelites. We don't know if these were from other areas, Philistines or something. Um, but but the reality is, is they could have been calling down curses made in the names of other gods. And um, the curses sometimes were effective because if you think about it, if they're serving false gods... Well, what is that? That's the enemy. If you're not serving God, you're serving the enemy. And regardless if they called it, you know, some sort of false God or, or, or who they thought they were serving, there's power in that because just as much as we serve God and, and righteousness, there's a very real king of this world, the enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And so they were evoking the name of these false gods, but the power there would come from the enemy. And sometimes those curses would be effective. And so there was this spiritual battle that was going on even, even back then. And I think we sometimes ignore the fact that some of the things we experience now today are spiritual. They very well could be curses because even in our culture now, it's not unheard of to, to have even young people that are involved in witchcraft and all sorts of stuff. I mean, I, I even know like some mainstream stores I've seen just like a whole section of crystals and tarot card reading and all this like, you know, stuff that I feel like a couple years ago, even, even just like four or five years ago would not be found in mainstream stores, but now it is, it's accessible. And so I think that we would be doing a disservice to not recognize that that is something that even now it feels foreign to us, but it could be something that we're dealing with. But regardless, that's what David was dealing with in this situation. And then let me go down to verse nine. It says, low born men are but a breath the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. The psalmist is talking here about opposite ends of the spectrum. So he's talking about the lowborn and the highborn. And so basically the lowborn are talking about um, perhaps those that are living in poverty. And the highborn are those that are the higher class of society in that culture. 
the ones that had more money or more status or you know, land, those kinds of things. And so he's having this comparison, but basically he's saying like, there's really no difference. They're, they're both but a breath, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things without God, there's no difference between the rich and the poor. And, and again, in verse 10, there's a comparison where he's talking about riches and he says, do not set your heart on them. Because even if you have all the riches that you want, if you don't have God, they're meaningless. If you don't have God, all the riches in the world mean nothing because there's an inability to find deep soul rest without God. That's the only place you can find it. And, um, you know, you hear that more money, more problems. That's, that's the reality of it. You have, you have bigger bills when you have more money. So if you don't have God as the foundational aspect of your life, all of that is, is going to be worthless. And then, The conclusion of the psalm really brings together two thoughts. The first is just this thought of God's power and love. So God exercises his power because of his love and within this relationship, this covenant that he has with his people. And because of that, he is trustworthy. And so then the second aspect or the second thought is that there is this biblical principle that God will reward each person according to what they have done because God is just. Now, a caveat with that is there are some people that think, okay, because God rewards each person according to what they have done, I'm just going to do a bunch of really good things and hope that it's enough to get me into heaven. False. You are not loved for what you're doing. You're loved for who you are. However, you know, we get to heaven through salvation, through belief in Jesus and accepting the forgiveness that is offered to us through the cross. That's how we get to heaven. But there is also a consequence for the kinds of acts that we do. And so just like my children, if my, you know, uh, one child takes out the garbage without being asked, they're likely going to get their allowance for that week. If I have another child that has a bad attitude and, you know, is not participating in the family, there's going to likely be some consequence for that, you know, earlier bedtimes or less cell phone time or whatever it is. It's, it's a natural order of the way that God has created the world. And that's not indifferent to our efforts to build the kingdom. And so this idea that, that God will reward each person according to what they've done, that goes for the good and for the bad. I mean, God is a just God. And so yes, there's grace available to us, but if we don't ask for that grace, then we are going to suffer the natural consequences of the sin, the simple life we've led. So I just want to make sure that we're aware of that. and We don't gloss over that. And the other thing I want to say, and then we're going to read it again, is that this is a picture of something that Jesus talks about in Matthew 11, where Jesus is holding out this offer of rest to those that will come to him. And I think that's the key here. God offers us rest, deep soul rest, but we're, we don't get it automatically. It comes through the context of our, our relationship with him, where we can lay aside the pursuit of wealth and the pursuit of status and the pursuit of the career. And we come and we lay it all before him and we say, okay, God, without you, I'm nothing. And that's where we get to a place where we can experience peace in the midst of chaos or peace in the midst of, um, you know, whatever's going on in our lives. That place of deep soul rest comes through the context of relationship. Let's not forget get that. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to read Psalm 62 again, given those insights. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? They fully intend to topple him from this lofty place. They take delight in lies with their mouths. They bless, but in their hearts, they curse. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him. Our God is our refuge. Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard, that you, O God, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. God, thank you for your presence in our lives and your desire for us to find rest, deep soul rest in you alone. Lord, help us to 
break away from the distractions of this world, the pursuit of wealth, the pursuit of status, the pursuit of um, just keeping up with the Joneses. Lord God, help us to instead lay those things down in surrender as we come to you and, and really allow our relationship with you to take precedence over everything else in our lives. Lord, I pray that as we get to that place, we would experience this deep soul rest that, that your word promises to us. And Lord, I thank you that you intentionally lay this out for us in the scripture in a way that is still relevant today, even despite the fact that we are in a different time in a different place then David, we can understand who you are through the pages of the scripture. God, I thank you for the treasure of your word. I pray a blessing over my friends today that you would make yourself known to them in a real and tangible way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friend, do you feel like you need a little one-on-one? My goal for the She Hears Ministry, the Hearing Jesus podcast, all the resources that we have is to really help you learn how to hear God's voice so that you can be confident in your relationship with him. And if you're struggling to learn how to identify or even overcome the barriers that you have in your life to growth, I want to be able to walk through that with you. Did you know that I'm a Christian life coach? Maybe you're struggling with something and you need some objective biblical insight or opinions, or maybe you need to work through something that feels just a little bit too heavy to do on your own. I would love to walk through that with you and land on some practical ways to achieve that goal. And so I have some limited coaching opportunities. If you go to shehears.org, there's a section where you can schedule some one-on-one time with me. I have Mondays and Fridays open right now going into the new year. So I pray that if that is something that you need, that you've been praying about that it would be an opportunity for you to take advantage of some one-on-one time with me. And again, my heart is really to help you lean into whatever it is that God is calling you to do. I pray that that's a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.